I'm Hans Abbing um, and I'm a part-time artist, you could say. About half of my time goes into art and a part-time scientist. And um, as a scientist, my topic is arts, sociology of the arts, economics of the arts. Well, of course, as an artist, I look at a little bit of the other side of arts than many uh, scientists do. I'm, you know, I've been a poor artist in a way, I'm still a poor artist. And the large majority of artists is poor. So we tend to focus on the artists who earn a lot of money or high prices on the art market. But we are far more representative of arts. I've been asking, well, why are these, all these artists so poor? Why are they willing to work for such low incomes? Yeah, there must be a huge, some strange attraction to the arts. In your mind, you, you join a group, a special group of people. So in a way, you're poor, but you're also privileged. And that's, yeah, that follows from the high esteem for art, which have, has existed ever since 1800. It's been growing, at least still after the Second World War. Maybe now something, something is changing. The cuts could be a sign of a different situation emerging. But yes, uh, the esteem for art has been very, very exceptionally high. Um, and that's part of the reason why the profession is so uh, attractive. Well, what works against them is this uh, notion that art doesn't go together with commerce, I would say. They have to live up to that notion. Um, and that yeah, guides their conduct, conduct. They always have to go for a maximum of autonomy. So as soon as they can cover their cost and a little bit for living, or they have a second job, they go for the extreme where you are as autonomous as possible. Uh, but that, of course, works against you. You have no markets, uh, no customers, uh, no public, which is also demoralizing. You're only relating to peers and the art world, and the notions, the present notions of the art world. Personally, I think uh, always striving for the extreme of uh, as much autonomy as possible is almost just as little autonomous as going for a larger audience or trying to sell in the market. And maybe, uh, you know, trying to sell or have an audience uh, might as much stimulate uh, uh, creativity as orienting yourself on the art world and your peers. I'm very happy when I can make art. And, uh, and I'm not so happy when I have to do all this marketing, but yeah, it feels bad because I want to get it across. Um, and also, I'm an old-fashioned artist, so all the things I blame other artists for, or the art world, in a way apply also to me. I'm very much directed on recognition by peers. Too much, maybe. <laughs> I think there's, there are many changes going on. I th think the respect for art is less uh, yeah, natural, it's, uh, yeah, they're not also uh, common people, but also uh, intellectuals and politicians who, yeah, who can speak out, uh, it, yeah, can formulate their doubts about art, and, uh, and they're not immediately put away like uh, as barbarians by the art world or by the elite. It would be great if artists would say, oh, come on, I'm no longer working for so little money. I'd rather leave the art or really demand proper uh, income. They could ask for certifications, let's say, uh, well, a museum or an institute. Well, you can have my artwork, but you have to at least uh, pay as much as this and this. Yeah? Uh, that would, would probably be a nice uh, development. So that's professional, professionalization. But that also means that you take a different position and say, yeah, I'm not so special, I'm like other people and I want a decent income.